All right, hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Princess Connect Redive video. And today I'm gonna be doing my top two star tier list because I did a poll on my community tab and I asked you guys if you want to be seeing a two star and a one star tier list as well because I did just do an update to my three star tier list. Now, I think I'll do the one star tier list either tomorrow or sometime maybe a day or two days after the release of this video. So stay tuned for that. Now, my three star tier list, I actually started from SS tier and I went down to S to A to B then C. But this time, I'm going to be starting from the bottom at the Star Po tier, and then we're going to be going up to C, B, A, S, and then S, S. We'll end off on S, S. So let's go ahead and start really quickly and see how our placements go. Starting off with C tier, I'm going to be putting our girl Matsuri. Um, very underwhelming character, if I'm going to be honest. Let me go ahead and pull her up just to talk about her really quickly. Um, she has been very, very underwhelming. She just doesn't do much. You, I don't really see a reason why you'd want to use this character pretty much anywhere other than Battle Arena. But there's, I mean, you can use her, I guess, somewhat in Battle Arena. But who, are you going to use her over Halloween Shinobu? Like, uh, I don't think you are. Are you going to use her over Reno Cannon? I, I don't think you are. Are you going to use her over like a Magical Ilya team? Don't think you are. So she's just kind of like a weird two-star character. She doesn't really do much. She does horrible boss damage. Yeah, un unsuitable for boss battle. She literally gets a D tier in clan battle. Uh, so yeah, her only real quote-unquote way she can be used is arena mode. And she's not that great in it. So she's just kind of a bad two-star character. So C tier for Mitsuri. Next character going to into C tier is actually going to be Ren. I had Ren in my C tier last time. Um, once again, just a kind of weird character. She does get really good with unique equipment, if I'm not mistaken. But she just kind of is in a weird spot where she kind of doesn't do much. She's not a healer. She's She buffs up defenses, which doesn't really make sense to me. Like, why would you buff up defenses rather than healing your teammates? Um, I think she does heal her teammates, but it's not noticeable at all. I think she, yeah. So she does get good with unique equipment, right? But right now, at the current moment, she's just a straight C tier character. I don't see her getting any better. Um, I don't see any reason why you'd want to use this character ever, like in any scenario whatsoever. You have way better options. So C tier for Rin, I feel like it's pretty much a given. Okay, we're going to move up to B tier. Now, B tier is going to be the same size as the C tier, basically two characters. And I'm going to put our boy Yuki into there. The only boy character in the entire game that's playable at the current moment, Yuki. Um, so Yuki, I don't know. He's kind of a weird one. You don't really use him anywhere, like at all, anywhere, period. Uh, you could use him on Reno Cannon teams, but that's his really only spot on any teams. He doesn't do much. He regenerates TP and he lowers defense on his Union Burst. His Union Burst takes a super long time to charge up. He doesn't hit hard. He's not that great of a support character compared to people like Sarad and Yukari, so you just have way better options to use for TP regeneration than him. Um, so I just feel like he's underwhelming, so pretty much only spot you could use him in is literally Reno Cannon Comp in Battle Arena. That's literally it. Other than that, he's got no other teams. He's not useful in Clan Battle. He's not useful in Story Mode, so just a B-tier character. And the next we're going to be putting our other B-tier character, and that is going to be Mimi. She's kind of underwhelming. The same same reason why I find Yuki underwhelming is that there's just way better options than Mimi. For example, you have Shiori, Shiori who's a better physical damage dealer. You got Kiori, who's weight like a million times better. You have so many physical attackers that just outperform Mimi in almost every single scenario. She is good in some certain cases on defense and maybe Princess Arena. Other than that, though, I see no other reason why you actually want to use this character point blank period, like, at all. You just have no reason to use her. You have way better options who do way more damage than she does, unfortunately. So, B tier for Mimi. And starting off A tier, I'm going to be putting Eriko. Now, Eriko, she's going to get really good, okay? When she gets unique equipment, I'm probably going to move her up to either here or here. Like, when she gets unique equipment, she's going to be super top tier. At the current moment, at 5-star Eriko, she can do pretty good damage. I think she's definitely better than Mimi in terms of physical attack and in terms of viability in clan battle. So I, I do have her up in a higher bracket just to show that she's a little bit stronger than Mimi in terms of clan battle. Overall, like DPS, physical DPS damage. So 8 tier for Eriko, I don't really need to talk about her too much. All she does is a lot, lots of big damage, um, not as much as other physical carries that you'll see in a second, but she does really good damage. Next 8 tier character is going to be Ayane. 
Um, Ayane, actually, I'm gonna have to pull her up since I don't remember quite exactly what her kit does, but I just remember it off the top of my head. So she does like stuns and all that stuff. She's really annoying in PvP mode. Yeah, she inflicts massive damage uh, to a large physical damage to one enemy in front and then stuns and knocks back the target. So this is actually really good against characters, uh, big tank characters. They'll knock them back and it'll actually allow you to move forward and push through the front line. So Ayane can actually be pretty decent in battle arena. Um, yeah, so her six star, she gets an SS tier. So when she gets her six star, she'll be pretty good. She's actually pretty, pretty good in quest speed as well. Uh, she will reduce action speed as well. Strong AOE stun skill. So she's just a pretty solid all around character, but I don't really see a reason why you'd want to use this character. Maybe for arena, uh, it looks like they recommend her for quest mode. And I know she actually had quite usefulness in clan battle not too long ago. I think the last clan battle, you're actually able to use INA in one of these scenarios in one of the stages INA actually did pretty well. So that's why I have her in A tier is because of how useful she has been recently in clan battle. But yeah, so A tier for INA, I feel like she definitely does deserve it, A for INA. Next character is going to be actually a shocker to a lot of people, uh, and that is going to be Suzuna. Um, I feel like she definitely has fallen off, simply for the fact of the release of the brand new character, Christina, who literally just came out, which completely and utterly replaces Suzuna in every way, shape, and form. Um, Suzuna now, she just does not scale as she once was. She is still really good, don't get me wrong. Really good for early game players if you're moving up through the quest mode, if you haven't beat all the quest mode stages yet. Suzuna definitely can be your DPS carry from a, a beginner standpoint, right? She's a strong, strong starter two-star character, but she just kind of falls off late game. There's just way better options than her. I think Shiori is definitely better than her. Um, she does have her guaranteed crits though, so she can be somewhat useful in PvP, but once again, are you really going to run Suzuna over Christina if you have Christina? The answer is no. So Suzuna, just because of Christina being Suzuna, but on steroids, Suzuna kind of loses some of her of or her value and she kind of drops down to A tier. So I hope a lot of people understand that standpoint where I'm coming from, whereas why would you use Suzuna when you have Christina? Um, next A tier character is actually going to be Sumigi. Uh, Sumigi, I feel like I feel like she's really good. If you're fighting a Sumigi in PvP mode, she is super annoying, especially if she's at five stars. She will really mess you up if you don't know how to counter her properly. Very strong kit overall, just a lot of binding and, and stunning your enemies so that they can't move with the bind and all that stuff. So she's just really powerful, really hard to play against, but once you get the hang of her, she kind of doesn't really get in the way too much. Still a very strong kit overall, pretty disruptive kit. So A tier for her, I feel like she definitely does deserve it. I don't feel like she's as strong as, as valuable as S tier and SS tier, but I feel like she's definitely strong enough to deserve an, a high tier spot. All right, last A tier spot is actually going to go to the newest two star, Nanaka. Okay, so Nanaka. Now Nanaka, I have found her to kind of just be a budget Kyoka. Um, I did a review on her and I said, oh my God, she's like a three star character. And I found her to actually do a little bit of damage. Her only downfall at the current moment is the fact that she is a Divine Amulet only two-star character. Once she eventually gets her stages where she's able to farm up her five stars for free, I feel like at that point she might be good. But at the current moment, especially if you have a four-star, a five-star Kyoka, a two-star Nanaka just isn't going to cut it. Um, I feel like Kyoka definitely will end up outscaling Nanaka, but... For the most part, if you have like a three-star Nanaka and you don't have a Kyoka, Nanaka is definitely a very, very solid replacement option for her, like 100%. She defensive lowers. She does really, really high damage on her Union Burst. Her only downside really is that she can get taunted and get the abilities taken away from her. Other than that, though, she's a great magical character. And if you do end up pulling on her, I don't re really blame you because she's really solid. But in my opinion, I personally would just wait until you get her off of just a random 10 pool and she ends up being like your guaranteed two star or just wait until she becomes farmable inside of shops so that you can pick her up for free. Um, but yeah, Nanaka, pretty solid new character. Definitely going to be an A tier slot. All right, starting off in S tier, I'm going to be putting our girl Kuka. Um, now the Kuka, the reason why she's in S tier and not higher, yes, she is the best magic defender in the game. Yes, I get that. Her only downside is when do you use her other than PvP defense? When? Like, give me a reason why. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't see any other reason why you'd want to use Kuka outside of the defensive mode in any of the PvP modes. I guess you could use her maybe in story mode, I guess. But 
She's super high S tier for the simple fact that she is currently the best magic tank in the entire game. She eats up magic damage. All right, next S tier character is going to be a character I just did a five star showcase on, and that is going to be Shiori. Now, Shiori has proven herself to be very, very strong. Um, the only downside I really see with Shiori is for the simple fact that there's just way better stackers nowadays. I mean, before we had Kiori and Chiori, who were the two premier stacking kind of universe characters, right? But now we have Tomo and Christina, and a lot more characters are coming out. People are gonna be getting their uni like their unique equipment. Ray's gonna be getting her unique equipment. So Shiori, I feel like she loses a little bit of her value from that. Um, she's still amazing, amazing two-star character. Very good clan battle carry. She does really good there. If you have no, if you have like literally no other DPS option, Shiori will do amazing. Great in almost every single boss fight. She just does great. Like she's just a great all-around character. She fits in almost every single area, maybe except for PvP. Other than that, though, she's amazing. All right, next S tier character is going to be Tamaki. Um, very annoying defensive character in clan battle. Same thing goes for her and Kuka. They they are really strong in defense, but. I feel like Tamaki does have a little bit of an edge here because you actually can use her for some DPS scenarios in clan battle. She's also very good on attack against a magical comp. So Tamaki definitely is a very, very strong character. Stealing TP, really useful against some bosses. For example, the EX dungeon boss, you can steal TP from him and stop him from universing you. So very all around solid kit. Uh, I definitely feel like she's a very strong S tier option. All right, next S tier option is going to be Akari. One of the best magical supports in the entire game, Akari provides the team with magical defensive shred as well as healing. Uh, her healing is a little bit weird because it's based off of the damage that your teammates do it. They heal themselves back with that HP. But if you can time some universe perfectly, you will end up healing yourself back up to full basically with your universe. And yeah, defensive shredding, physical magic defensive shredding is always nice to have on a kit. And you combine that with the support and healing capabilities, Akari definitely stands out. And solid defenses, she does stand out 100%. You see her used a lot in PvP teams. She can be used a lot. Uh, mostly, you're going to see her used in clan battle, where she really shines against boss fights. Um, and in dungeon mode, she also si shines against boss fights. Any boss fight, really, where you're going to be bringing any kind of magical team, usually you'll end up using Akari on that team. She brings so much to the table, so that is why I'm going to be putting her into S tier. And the final S tier character is going to be our girl Mitsuki. Now, Mitsuki, I have found her to be insane. Um, she definitely has gotten way better. I remember in my last two star tier list, I think I had her in either A tier or B tier. I'm not quite sure where I had her, but she had definitely has gotten way better. She has one of the highest, I think, if not the highest physical defensive shred in the entire game um, on a single skill. She has insane defensive shred. You're always going to be using her. Always, always, always using her in clan battle. Boss fight, she does really good because of her shredding. PvP mode, she does really good with Reno, Ninon, Sh uh, Halloween Shinobu. Those characters, AoE physical characters. Summer Pekarin even. Uh, she's just amazing there. She heals herself. If she ends up killing an enemy with her universe, which I found not to be the most common ability in the entire game. But if she ends up killing an enemy, she does heal herself which is really sweet, so it can't come in clutch in some scenarios in PvP. Um, she also has a curse ability, which will curse the enemy and do tick damage over time. So an all-around very, very powerful kit. All right, and we're going to move into the SS tier. I'm just going to put them all top three into SS tier. Of course, we have Kiori Misoto, who is probably the best healer in the entire game. And then we have Miyako, who is the best physical defender in the entire game. And you're going to be seeing a lot more use out of her than you would out of Kuka. Um, Miyako healing herself, uh, becoming immortal to damage is insane. She's just such a crazy tank that for most fights in story mode, example, hard mode stages, you will end up using something like a Miyako Nozomi June comp, maybe a triple tank comp, maybe a Miyako Nozomi, maybe a Miyako June. You're going to be using her pretty much everywhere that has a boss fight except for clan battle because uh, she does not provide defensive shredding of course so she's not going to be really used on any like big damaging teams however in any other stages where damage really doesn't matter and all you care about is winning the stage for example pvp defense miyako is amazing pvp offense miyako is amazing story mode hard mode miyako is amazing dungeon miyako is amazing so I feel like she just performs amazing all around in all these other game modes. Her being the best physical defender in the entire game, becoming immortal, healing herself, 
twice on one of her skills and her universe on top of that deserves SS tiers. Next we have Kiori of course. Kiori is still probably one of the top DPS's in the entire game. I feel like Christina is a little bit better than her. Even though Christina and Tomo might have replaced her, she's still no the number three DPS in the entire game. You still will pretty much use her in almost every single clan battle mode. Every single normal quest mode, you're going to be using her for every stage pretty much. Every boss fight that and hard mode stages use her. Dungeon mode, you're going to be using her. Only mode you're not going to be really using her is PvP. Um, other than that though, probably top 3 DPS in the entire game. She definitely deserves the highest tier spot of play. And then the last character we have is Misoto. Um, I think Misoto last time was either S tier or A tier. But she definitely has aged on me and grown on me. And I feel like she definitely deserved the highest tier of play. Any magical team that you ever will run in this entire game, 95% of the time, you will be running a Misoto on your team. 95% of the time. Sometimes you'll just have a Karya solo healing. But if Misoto, if you need a healer, Misoto will be there. Misoto provides you with magic attack. She provides you with a small amount of magic defense, and she does single target healing on top of her AoE healing union burst. Uh, I think I feel like she's definitely the best healer in the entire game. Yubi's only better in scenarios where the boss will be a strictly physical attacker. Other than that, though, Masoto is pretty much a must run on almost every single one of your magic teams for the most part. And I think arena mode is only where you're going to not be using her as much. Clan battle, you're going to 1 million percent be using her on almost every single one of your magic teams. Uh, story mode, 100% using her on almost every one of your magic teams. Hard mode, always using her for the, for the most part. So, considering how valuable she is throughout the entire game, she, her just being a AoE healer makes her super, super powerful. And I definitely feel like she deserves the SS tier spot. So, there we go. That is going to wrap up my tier list. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I'll probably do the one star tier list either tomorrow or two days from now whenever this tier list comes out. So stay tuned for that, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace out, and I'll see you guys all later. Bye-bye.